Hey guys, coming at you from my makeshift home office here. And today I thought I would answer your Instagram questions about Instagram. Hey Willow. Are you ready to talk about your Instagram growth? Huh? You wanna do it? Oh, she's gonna lay down. So I'm just gonna go through your questions, kind of explain some stuff. I'm a graphic designer and I, so that's why I am able to do a lot of cool things with Willow's Instagram just because I, I have the equipment and I have the education somewhat. I am a self-taught graphic designer so anyone can do it if you have the eye and the passion. But anyways, I'm just going to go through some of your questions and explain and answer them as best as I can. One question I get a lot is how I take such good pictures of Willow. I do use a professional DSLR camera. I will link it in the description below, but it's a Canon EOS 800D. I've also invested a lot of money in cool lenses because I really love shooting with that depth of field. My favorite lenses are my 35mm f1.4 and my 50mm f1.4 and I also have a 24mm f2.8 which works pretty well and I'm shooting with that right now. Actually it's a very lightweight lens and it's great for getting wide angles and still maintaining that depth of field and it's great for traveling as well because it's super lightweight and the other two lenses I mentioned are um, very heavy. So that is how I take the photos. I edit them using Lightroom. I actually have Adobe Creative Cloud Suite um, and I get it through my work so I'm not paying for it but um, you it does require a subscription you can actually download the Lightroom mobile app and use that for free. And we also sell my favorite presets that I use pretty much to edit all of my photos on our website, willofthecorky.com, which I will also link below. And you can download those straight to your phone, basically save the presets as a photograph and then upload it into your Lightroom mobile app and then save that preset. There's tons of how-to guides on the internet. I can also link that below as well. Another thing that obviously helps with taking photos of Willow is that she knows some tricks like sit, stay, watch me. Those I have been working on with her since she was eight weeks old basically I started taking pictures of her because I am a photographer and I like was so happy to have someone to take pictures of after I got Willow so she's been subjected to my camera since she was eight months old or eight weeks old and I think she's just gotten used to it a lot of dogs when I try to take pictures of them they don't know how to sit and stay so if you're trying to get your dog better at sitting for photos, sit and stay are the best things to teach them. I started with maybe having Willow sit and I would hold a treat and say stay and she would sit for the photo and then I would give her the treat after. And now she always gets a bunch of treats but I can have her sit and stay for much longer without having to reward her after every single photo I take. So. That is also extremely helpful when taking good pictures of my dog. Another thing is that I would say I put a lot of time into taking pictures. I What I like to do is get ideas. I'll go through people's accounts that I really love, um, dog brand accounts that post really good cute content like let's say Furbo, Kin and Kind. Um, things like that and I'll go through and just favorite or save photos and just get ideas for shoots that I want to do and then on the weekends I literally rearrange my entire house to be able to shoot on a white wall and 
you know, make sure I have all the things that I want Willow to wear. So it takes a lot of prep and organizing and it's really good to have an idea of the kind of photos that you want to take before you take them. Another thing that I do is I like to take Willow to landscape pretty places. I live near the desert so I'll take her out to just the desert when the sun is setting and that's when you're going to get the best lighting for photos and I'll just take a couple pictures especially when I need photos for a brand shoot. I'll bring like a bag of food or treats or whatever and just shoot a couple photos while the sun's setting. She sits and I come home, put them all on my computer and edit them on my room. Another thing that I am really conscious of is my feed and how that looks. I like to keep all of my photos kind of looking the same. So I'll use basically the same filter on all my photos. I like the photos to be minimal, so I like a lot of whites in my photos, a lot of plain space, a lot of open space. And one big key I would say to having a good looking feed would be to put don't put two photos that look exactly the same next to each other. Spread those photos that look similar out by at least five posts. So you don't want similar photos stacking on top of each other or being next to each other like connect four. You know, they don't you don't want them to connect, but being diagonal is usually fine. Another rule of thumb that I like to go by that I just think looks good is if you say post a close up photo of the dog's face or the human's face in one photo, the photo that's next to it should be a further away shot and so on and so forth. And I'll throw up some of my feed to show you what I mean by that. Um, but it's really just about making sure the feed is cohesive and doesn't look too similar but is still consistent aesthetic. An app that I really love to use and making sure my feed is going to flow well and make sure that I like photos next to each other is Unum and it's totally free. You can link your Instagram account so it will show um, all of your previous photos and then you can just upload new photos and rearrange them and see how your feed is going to look that way. And I love that app. I use it, I'm on it as much as I'm on Instagram. It's super fun and it's really easy to use. So that is pretty much how I make my photos look good. A lot of work, but I really love doing it. And if you love doing it, I hope these tips help you kind of figure out your next steps in making your Instagram feed look even better. I, I, I am too hard on myself and it's hard not to compare your feed to other people's feed and seeing your pictures all the time, you kind of get used to them and you start to feel like they're not as good as everyone else's and I feel that way all the time so but I know that I'm looking at my feed through my own lens and everybody else probably doesn't feel the same way so just keep that in mind don't try to compare yourself to other people too much but definitely teach your dog sit stay um, get a good camera and start trying out Lightroom to edit your photos. What I would say about follower growth, whether you've been trying to grow your account for a long time or you're new to Instagram, what, you would, what I would advise you to do is post every single day, use hashtags, and tag bigger accounts that usually share um, dog photos or Whatever niche you're in, photography, just find those big accounts that like to reshare other accounts and that will help you get more viewers and followers. Always tag those accounts. Another big way to get people to follow you is to be posting good content all the time. Because when before people follow you, they look at your feed and they decide whether or not your content is good enough or if they just like your one post. So you want all of your content to be good. You want your feed to be aesthetically pleasing. That's how you're going to get more people to follow your account. And then just reaching out to brands and bigger accounts and asking to do giveaways or partnerships. That's always great. 
Um, you don't want to come off annoying and just slide into someone's DMs and ask them to follow you or to share your account because you're going to need something that's mutually beneficial to the two of you. I started posting Willow's Owu videos and nobody, like I thought that they were a crazy, funny, hilarious thing and it wasn't getting picked up by anyone. My followers liked it and commented but it wasn't attracting any new followers really. And so what I was doing though is tagging big accounts like Pupflix, Buzzfeed, Unilad, the Dodo, accounts like that and I can go through and actually tell you what accounts I tag. Let's see, I tag Instagram, animals.co, Corgi Instagrams, my fave Corgi, Corgi feed, doggos doing things. Gorgeous Corgis, Corgi underscore IG, I tag Canon USA, and accounts like The Doggist, Daily Fluff, Best Woof, Corgi Nation, Corgis of Instagram, Dogs of Instagram. So you want those accounts to be able to find you because they want content to post on their feeds as well. So they will appreciate your tagging them and if they decide to repost your content, it's gonna attract a lot of followers to your account. So what happened with me was I tagged Pupflix and they have 1 million followers on Instagram and they shared my Willow A Woo video and that's when all the other big media and big account companies started seeing that video and they would request to post my video and it just grew and grew and grew from there. So you're not going to get exposure unless you're trying to expose yourself to these bigger accounts and then once one account picks you up, it's going to grow from there. Hashtags are super important because a lot of people are following hashtags and discovering accounts on the um, this discovery feed. So you want people to be able to discover your account. I still do that even though we have a lot of followers. I still use hashtags. I still tag big accounts, not as much, but um, I do in the comments where I put my hashtags. I tag accounts so that they can find me. And that's really how we got followers. Another great question that I got was how long did it take for me to hit 10K followers? And um, what was the most helpful in getting you there? So what happened with my growth was since I had that Awu video go viral, I started getting a lot of followers really quickly. And that is what helped me the most with reaching 10K. If you have a dog account, I would say that the best way to do that is to get your uh, video or photo picked up by someone like We Rate Dogs or Pupflix or Buzzfeed or Corgis of Instagram, um, you know, something like that. And to have as many people or big accounts share that as possible that is going to be the quickest way for your dog account to really grow. Another way to gain followers quickly would be to reach out to brands to do giveaways with them or even just bigger accounts. But you need to know that doing giveaways with other brands or accounts, they need to somehow benefit from that. So let's say you are a small account you want to grow but you don't have a bunch of followers behind you if you do take great photos and edit them well and can deliver good content that brands would be interested in i would totally recommend reaching out to brands in um requesting to trade with them so let's say you take five photos of your dog with their product, send it to them so that they can use it for however they'd like for their social media, for ads, whatever. Um, 
So yeah, you want to have a mutual benefit and if you can provide content for that company, they may be willing to do a giveaway with you. And what you want that company to do is share your giveaway post to their followers so that then their followers have to follow your account in order to win that giveaway. Another thing to do with giveaways is either require or ask, um, tell any entrance for the giveaway that they'll get extra entries if they share your post so that more people are seeing your post. Um, another thing with giveaways is you need to give away something that people are really going to want. Otherwise people aren't going to enter just because it's free doesn't mean, you know, people are going to come from their friend's account who shared it and then over to your account and follow you and enter. So you definitely want to give away something that people are going to be attracted to. Maybe it's cute bandanas. Maybe it's dog treats. Um, I have learned that people are more interested in apparel than treats. But um, if you can give away like an entire gift package. Another thing I remember reading when I started out my dog account is to share what makes your dog unique. So if there's something that your dog is doing, you need to make sure you capture it and show the world because, I mean, the market is saturated with dog accounts. Everybody has an account for their dog now. And what's going to put you ahead of them is obviously being consistent, sharing unique, funny, good content all the time, but also, being somewhat unique. And so for me, that was Willow's howling while eating. And there are other dogs out there that do it, but I think I was the first one to really share that and continually keep pushing and posting and, you know, doing as much as I could with that uniqueness that Willow has. So, you know, whatever your dog does that's unique, put that at the forefront of your account and try to get people to notice you that way. At least at first, when you're starting out, you want to make yourself stand out from the rest. Let's see if there's any other questions. I'm just gonna go through Um, how do I make my corgi as photogenic as Willow? Honestly, Willow was just born, I don't know. She, she surprises me. I get really frustrated photographing her a lot of times because I feel like she's not listening to me. I start to feel like a horrible dog parent because I'm forcing my dog to sit there with food in front of her and not allow her to eat it. Um, and then sometimes I just feel like my photos aren't turning out well and then I'll upload them all to my computer and start editing them and I'm just blown away by the expressions Willow makes. Like she's so expressive, she has so much personality and I, I just think she was born that way. I don't know. Um, help, what will help with your making your corgi mo more photogenic is just to take a bunch of pictures. I take, you should, I have probably a million photos of Willow. And you know, I take it on continuous so that I can grab all of those expressions. And I just have my shutter speed at a very quick speed so I can capture all of her expressions. And then I just edit the photos really well to make them look nice. But yeah, it's really about capturing those expressions because dogs are very expressive. They make the funniest faces. You just have to be ready to catch them. Actually said, so everyone thinks my friend has a better dog because he's purebred, but mine is better. Like, better personality, better temperament. <laughs> and they said, how can I grow my account when people think my dog is a garbage mutt? So, yeah, I know, that's hard. It's That's why it was super easy with Willow as well because people are really into corgis right now. So obviously I've been able to feed off that. There's so many corgi accounts, there's so many corgi hashtags. But you know, with any breed of dog, you just have to find their personality and really express that through their Instagram and find what makes them different. And you know, show people that and edit the photos well, create good content. There's good 
my Instagram accounts out there. And you know, there's, you just really have to showcase what makes them unique and tag those dog Instagram accounts. Like we rate dogs is great. I probably got 40,000 followers from re we rate dogs rating Willow. So just trying to get those accounts to pick up your dog. Doesn't matter if they're a mutt. Dogs are all awesome. They have funny personalities. Um, and just, just showcase that because it's he or she is not a garbage mutt. You take such great pictures of Willow and get them seen without a million hashtags. I actually use the max amount. You can only use 30 hashtags per post. And I post 30 hashtags in the comments every time I post a picture. And I don't want to stop even though my account has grown to a great spot because I still want people to continue follow, following us and finding us. So always use hashtags and just always post good content because when people land on your page, if they, that's when they're deciding whether or not they're going to follow you. They're going to scroll down a few rows, decide if all of your content is good enough and worth following. So as long as your whole feed looks nice, people will follow you. I remember when I first saw Willow's brother Neville's Instagram account, they have the funniest captions. And that's why I was like, oh my God, yes, I'm following them. I read like three captions and was like, these are all so great. I'm following them. And they, and same with me, is we get a lot of our caption ideas from the internet, Pinterest. Just uh, make it yours. Don't be too cheesy unless that's gonna be your uh, shtick. But um, yeah, just, Funny captions, good content. So I hope those tips were helpful for you guys. Um, I would love to continue creating content like this. So let me know if you would enjoy more content like this. And if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. You want down? Mm. Ooh, do you need a potty? growing your account whether it be brand new or you've been trying to gain followers for a long time oh, hello.